In this video, we're going to talk about projectiles that are launched at an angle. Here we have a FET simulator where we are going to shoot a little cannonball out of this cannon. We are going to turn the velocity vectors on so that we can see the direction of the velocity vector. Let's see that again. So as you can see, the velocity is tangent to the path of the projectile. And if I turn the acceleration vectors on, you'll notice that the acceleration vector in yellow is always pointing down because the acceleration due to gravity is always down. Gravity never accelerates things to the right or to the left. Okay, so now let's turn the components of the velocity vectors on. So you can see what's happening to the forward um, and the, the vertical component. Okay, so notice how the forward or the x component is constant. This is because the x velocity in a projectile, it never changes. But the upward component given to the projectile first decreases and at zero, then gets bigger and points down. That's due to the acceleration due to gravity. All right, let's draw a picture of this to help ourselves understand it better. Okay, so let's draw a little projectile with a velocity, we'll call that v naught, and some angle theta. And we're going to give a little dotted line that shows the path of this projectile. Let's try and make that a little more level. Okay. Then draw the projectile at these different points, on the way up and on the way down. The acceleration vector is going to tell us the acceleration due to gravity. So remember, acceleration due to gravity. Uh, is little g and always down. Okay, and we would use 9.8 meters per second squared near the surface of the Earth. So if I draw that vector, it doesn't matter where the projectile is, the acceleration due to gravity is the same size and it always points down. Okay, good. Now let's talk about the velocity vector. The velocity vector is going to change a little bit. So I'm going to draw this picture um, just a little bit bigger. Here's the projectile. There's some initial velocity v naught at some angle. And let's make this path a little bit bigger just to give ourselves some room. Okay. Now we're going to draw um, this velocity vector just like we did, sorry, the projectile just like we did before in the middle, at the top, and then at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the vector components at each one of these places. So let's start by talking about the x component of velocity. The x component of velocity is horizontal. And you would use cosine of the angle and your magnitude to find it. Okay, now the thing is you could call this vx naught because it's the initial x velocity, but as we've shown, the horizontal velocity does not change. The x velocity stays the same. So you can just call it vx. And when you draw it, it should be the same size every time. So again, the horizontal component of velocity does not change. Okay, that's because it's a constant velocity. Gravity is not pulling it to the right or to the left. But Gravity is pulling down on the object, so that affects the y velocity. The y component of velocity, which would look like this, we would have to say v y naught um, because it's going to change as gravity pulls down the object. So first, it's going to change by decreasing the magnitude, meaning the arrow would get a little bit shorter, and now we would start to call this v y. Then at the top, v y is zero. It's not there because gravity will have slowed the object down um, in the vertical direction to a stop. But there is still this horizontal x velocity at that point. Okay, then as the object goes down, it starts to increase in downward velocity. So the y component uh, gets bigger. And eventually down here at the bottom, we're going to have our y component of velocity. Now notice that at equal heights, the velocity components are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. 
So that's a really helpful thing that we learned when we did free fall problems. Okay. Now, the actual velocity or the total velocity of these components. Oh, and first let's remember vy you would always find by doing um, v sine of the angle theta. Okay. So the total velocity is always going to be the magnitude. In this case, it would be the x, and then as it goes down, the velocity changes direction. And you would be able to find the magnitude of that velocity at any time by doing the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. Okay, great. Now, let's do a simple problem um, where we need to turn our velocity into an x and a y component in order to solve um, what it's asking us to find. You kick a soccer ball, giving it a velocity of 22 meters per second at an angle of 63 degrees above the horizontal. What is the maximum height that the ball reaches? What is the total time that the ball is in the air for? And how far forward does the ball travel? Okay, so let's start by drawing a picture. Here's the soccer ball. We kick it with some initial velocity. We'll call that v naught at an angle of theta. Um, and I'm going to write those things up here. v naught equals 22 meters per second, theta equals 63 degrees. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of sketch the trajectory, give myself enough room to work. It's always gonna be a parabola. And we're gonna start by taking the initial velocity v naught and turning it into an x and a y component. So to do that, we'll draw this as a right triangle because that sometimes is easier to see. And we're going to have vx, you could call that vx naught if you wanted to, um, and then vy naught in the beginning. So again, you can call this vx naught and vy naught. But the thing about the x velocity is that it doesn't change, so the beginning is equal to the final, so you can just call that vx. Okay. So to find vx and vy naught, we're going to use our x and y equations. The initial velocity times cosine of 63 degrees, um, which that's going to give me, I'm sorry, I should write it like this, theta, which is 22 meters per second, cosine of 63 degrees. Okay, so 22 cosine of 63, that's going to give me 10 meters per second, 9.98, we'll call that 10. Uh, and then the y component in the beginning is going to be v naught sine of theta, so that would be 22 meters per second times sine of 63 degrees. 22 sine 63 is going to be 19.6 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to write that over here. Vx equals 10 meters a second. Vy naught equals 19.6 meters per second. Okay, so you're actually going to need to use um, both of those pieces of information, and it might be helpful for you at this point to draw, like we've been doing, an X and a Y chart to keep track of all of this information. So you could write VX equals 10 meters a second over here, and VY naught equals 19.6 meters per second. Okay, now let's take a look at part A. What is the maximum height that the ball reaches? Okay, so at the maximum height, this is actually a lot like free fall problems where you throw an object up and it's in free fall. Um, and gravity is going to slow the object until its vertical velocity is zero. So at the maximum height, your projectile would still have an x velocity of 10. It would have that x velocity everywhere, in fact. Equals 10. Um, but at the top of your maximum height, you would have a, a vertical velocity, a vy, of 0 at that point. Now, you wouldn't have a vertical velocity of 0 um, at the bottom. In fact, at the bottom, you would have, just to write this out so we know, you would have a velocity of negative 19.6, because that's what we found as the initial, um, and it's going back to the same height. But so we're going to take advantage of the fact that the y component of velocity is 0 at the maximum height, and then say, okay, our initial height is 0, 
So what is this height y when our final velocity has reached zero? So we would write in our y column, y not equals zero, y equals question mark. And of course, we know that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters a second squared. Okay, so you don't know anything about time. And in this problem, you actually don't need to find time because you can use the ain't got no time equation, which written for y looks like this. Now we can write delta y, or I'm gonna write this as y minus y naught. Okay, and so now I'm gonna plug in zeros, our final velocity at the top here is zero, and the initial position is zero. Okay, when I plug those zeros in, I get negative 2g times y plus vy naught squared. And then I add 2gy to both sides. And now I can solve for the height, y, by um, dividing both sides by 2 and g. If I divide both sides by 2 and g, I'm going to get left with just y. Okay, great. So to find that height, I would take the initial y velocity, 19.6 meters a second, square the whole thing, and then divide that by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And I have to be careful to make sure I do that um, 2 times 9.8 in parentheses in my calculator so I don't screw it up. Okay, so this is going to give me, humorously enough, 19.6 meters. So the maximum height reached is 19.6 meters above zero or above the ground. Okay, great, now let's do the total time that the ball is in the air for. We're gonna get rid of some of this work um, just so that we have some space to kind of think through the problem. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. So we focus just on when it starts at the ground and then when it comes back to the ground at that same height. Okay, so there are a number of things that we can do. Um, I think the easiest would be to take advantage of the fact that our initial height, right, you start at the ground, is zero. And now, so, are, so is our final height. Because when the ball goes up and then comes back down, then it reaches a height of zero. Now, that's going to be really helpful for us to find time, because I know g is still 9.8 meters per second squared. And if I want to find t, well, now I can use this equation, y equals negative one-half gt squared plus vy naught t plus y naught, and I can get rid of the final position and the initial position. And this gives me 0 equals negative 1 half gt squared plus vy naught times t. Uh, and I can, I can start to solve this for t. You can do it a number of different ways. One is if you divide um, everything by t, then you're going to get 0 equals negative 1 half g t plus v y naught because the squared cancels, so does that t. So I'm going to write that up here. So we have a little bit of room. Negative 0 equals negative 1 half g t plus uh, v y naught, and so now I can add one half g t to both sides, and then multiply both sides by two, which gets rid of the one half, then divide both sides by g, and now I can solve for t. So two times 19.6 meters a second over 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is going to give me a total time of 4. So I know the ball is in the air for 4 seconds. Now, if it's in the air um, and it comes, you know, starts from the ground and goes back to the ground in 4 seconds, that also tells me that it reached its maximum height in 2 seconds. Uh, but we weren't asked to find that, so we don't have to say that. Just remember that it takes the same amount of time to reach the maximum height as it does to fall back down to the height it was launched from. Okay, so that's part B. Now, how far forward does the ball travel? Okay, well, if I want to figure that out, let me clear some of this stuff up. 
if I want to figure out how far forward it goes, then I would say the initial x position is 0, and I'm looking for x. Now I know that the time it takes to get to that position is 4 seconds. So in my x column, I can write 4 seconds. I know the horizontal velocity is 10. Remember, I found that doing um, 22 meters a second times cosine of 63. And I know the initial position is 0, and the fifth position I want to find x is our question mark. Now, thankfully, we only have one equation in the x direction, vxt plus x0. And my initial position is 0, so that goes away. And finding how far forward it goes is just as simple as taking that velocity, 10 meters a second, and multiplying it by the time we found that it's in the air, 4 seconds. So this ball goes 40 meters forward. So that is the answer to part C, how far forward does the ball travel. Okay, great. So in this video, uh, we talked about the acceleration uh, vector on a projectile as it's going through the air. Um, we talked about the x and y components of velocity and how to solve problems where you are given an angle and an initial velocity. So when a project, uh, projectile is launched at an angle. You are awesome and smart, and this video is over.